Hey, everybody. Welcome back. This is John Malanka with the United Patients Group. Be informed and be well. And the, my guest today is Lacey from Miriam's Hemp. Hey, Lacey, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? doing? Doing well. I don't know if you can see this, but today we're going to talk about CBN, one of my favorites. It helps with sleep. And so people always ask, you know, cannabis has about 140 different cannabinoids, THC, CBD. We spoke about CBG, uh, THCA, CBDA. And this one, as I mentioned, is one of my favorites because sleep is very important. And it, what sleep does, it helps heal the body and bring, bring in the body, everything, not only back to balance, but, but healing as well. And so this product is, or cannabinoid is called CBN. Uh, Miriam's Hemp puts this out as well. And CBN is a cannabinoid that occurs from oxygenation and decom decomposition of THC. And that's why it's commonly found or where it's commonly found in aged cannabis. And so there's some great stories of uh, parents finding their child's cannabis from, from college or high school in the box and they try it. And next thing mm -hmm. you know, it does work, but it puts them <laughs> to sleep. And so, uh, so that's the benefits of CB, CBN. So after THC, older cannabis converts into CBN. Um, and so a lot of people say stale, but I'll say it's a breakdown of the THC molecules. Uh, mm -hmm. Until recently, most people believe CBN to be a waste, a waste product, uh, unworthy and further, further examination. And, but that all changed after a study which showed CBN could be the most sedative of all cannabinoids. Again, could be the most sedative of all cannabinoids. The discovery led to the renewed interest in the therapeutic effects of CBN, and its role in regulating the endocannabinoid system. So how does CBN as well as uh, versus CBD compare? Uh, all these, although CBN is a byproduct of THC and contains sedating effects, it appears to be non-psychoactive apart from the chemical formula CBN and CBD interact with the human endocannabinoid system in fairly different ways. Uh, CBD shows little affirmity to the CB1 and CB2 effector re uh, uh, receptors found in the nervous system as well as the immune system. Instead, it increases the production of endocannabinoids to promote homeostasis. And so, as I mentioned, CBN does help with the sleep cycle. It does have a sense of calming as well as relaxation. It does work synergistically with all of the cannabinoids as well. It does have, and the CBN that they're offering uh, is a full yeah. spectrum account, uh, rich in phytocannabinoids, terpenes, as well as flavonoids, and each one milligram dropper contains about five milligrams to 20 milligram CBD hemp extract per one ML. If I said that correctly, Lacey, um, That's correct. you know, and I've been working with a lot of uh, autistic doctors and for, for their patients. And they're even saying, including this in with the autistic patients that are going through. And so I'll, I don't know if you've, you've seen that over at Miriam's Hemp, but yes, so I'd love, love for you to share that because that's a topic that's coming up quite a bit, but Lacey, welcome. Um, and thank, thank you for you. all that you do in this industry and for your organization. You know, uh, you have a great team over there working with Diana and Jeff and the whole Miriam's family. Um, and you put, you put out not only some great products and it's a beautiful packaging, but what's on the inside is, is, is incredible uh, as well. And again, I've been using your, I've known Jeff and, and Diana for years. Uh, they've done a lot with United Patients Group. And not only have they done a lot, but their products. Uh, I've used them personally. I've given them to my, to my family. Uh, Corinne used them as well as her father uh, used them as well. And so let's talk about sleep is so important. So what is this cannabinoid called CBN? What is CBN? Yeah, so cannabinol is a minor cannabinoid. It, it is a stale version of THC. So raw, heated, and aged, but over time, either by degradation, oxidation, or by heat, uh, THC turns into CBN. And so um, it is very special because it has such strong sedation properties, um, more so than a lot of the other cannabinoids, excluding CBG, which is comparative. Um, but not only for sedation, but there's also been some research suggesting that it might be good for immune system health, as well as um, the calming effects for anxiety. And also for, as you mentioned, um, people, individuals that have autism, ADHD, as well as OCD, because it provides a really um, even kill, <laughs> um, I would say, effect. And it just kind of helps you to kind of even out and relax and chill. So it's really effective for that. 
Um, so a lot of people use it during the day <laughs> as well as for night, but most people are using it to sleep. Yeah. Not only to fall asleep, but to stay asleep and wake up rested. You know, not only for healthy bodies, but for, for uh, I'll say, ill ill bodies. And that was the one thing when yes. Corinne was going through her battle with cancer, you know, sleep. They wanted her to sleep just to, again, heal that body. And this, and even in healthy mm -hmm. bodies, this is the part where our body really comes together. And really, if you're able to get eight hours of sleep, some people are able, only able to get six hours some people 10, but I think the, 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 the nice level is eight hours. And, uh, um, this product does, does help me at least. And so I wanted to share that as well. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So what, so what are the benefits of CBN besides sleep, um, and bringing the body back to balance and his well as healing, you know, a lot of, can you share some, what are the benefits of CBN? Yeah. So CBN is really great for immune system regulation. It is also really great for neurological support, as well as um, just like bringing your body back into balance overall, as far as homeostasis is concerned. There is some research suggesting that it can also be good for specific types of cancers, um, as well as anxiety disorders and neurological disorders um, to include ADHD, OCD, um, and autism. So there's a lot of people using CBN not only for sleep, but for those other benefits as well. Um, there's also some research suggesting that it'd be good for Crohn's disease um, and irritable bowel syndrome as well. It's amazing when we lose one night of sleep with the domino effect that, else, that comes with that. And yeah, losing... I know I'm cranky the next day. Oh, <laughs> it takes a <laughs> lot for me to get back on track. <laughs> you know, but it, you crankiness, anxiety, stress, yes. this all goes yes. up, diet, you know, what we're putting into our body. So we lose that one night of sleep. Next thing you know, like you said, cranky anxiety, stress, mm -hmm. drinking more coffee. If you're a coffee person, if you're a soda person, you're drinking more soda, trying to keep up and get back onto where you were. And sometimes again, it's yeah. the domino effect of going down and then you start eating unhealthy. Like, okay, I'm already, you know, cranky. I want to put, you know, a donut in my, in, into my body now. And so now your body's off, your gut's off and everything follow, follows. And so that's mm -hmm. why the, it really is beneficial to, to have a great night's sleep, uh, whatever that may be for you. But products like this or cannabinoids like this CBN uh, are very beneficial. Some people like melatonin, others like L-tryptophan. Um, you know, some people do stretching, some people do exercise, some people take a, a hot sauna. I think it's wonderful if, if you incorporate many of these. And so find out what's best for you when it comes to uh, getting a full night's sleep. Um, the topic of all these different cannabinoids is confusing for a lot of people. Candy. Sometimes yes. it's very confusing to me. I mean, for the longest time, I would think, what's the difference between CBDA versus CB, CBD? You know, and the same thing that comes up, if they're both doing the same, helping with sleep, being sedative at high levels. So, so the question is, what is the difference between CBN versus CBD? That's a really great question. Other than their, their makeup and how they're made um, within the cannabis plant, they are very similar um, and they can have very similar effects. But for some people using CBN at night works better for them than using CBD at night. And they might have to take more CBD to receive the benefits that taking maybe five or 10 milligrams of CBN would provide. Um, for a lot of people that I know, they would need upwards of 75 milligrams of CBD um, to go to sleep at night. And comparison, I've known some people that only need five milligrams, wow. that very same person only needing five milligrams of CBN to go to sleep. So it really just depends um, on the person and what, what works best for them. But some people respond just differently or they might respond the same, but you won't know unless you try it. So, you know, if you're using CBD already and you're finding results with sleep, then there's really no need to change or add CBN. Don't change what's not broken. But if there's still some room for improvement, you should either increase your CBD dose at night or maybe add some CBN and see if that works. Instead of adding melatonin or Ambien or anything like that, you know, CBN might be the trick for you and that's all you need to do. So, you know, it's a really great addition to a current regimen 
or using it instead of CBD or another cannabinoid product and receiving the benefits that you're looking for. You know, you, you bring up a good point of other, I guess, sleep aids, you know, the natural ones, melatonin to the not natural, the Ambien. And I remember Mm -hmm. when my father passed away, this is about 13, 14 years ago, the doctor gave us some, and I remember breaking off a half of Ambien because I hadn't slept and I slept. And I remember that next day I was just so, so groggy. It took me forever to get moving. I said, okay, this isn't good for my body. My mom said the same, same thing. And so, you know, and I, I know I've spoken to people to take two or three a night to get a good night's sleep and their body gets uh, accustomed to taking that every night. And so, yeah. And that does lead to addiction or dependency at some degree. Yeah. Um, with CBN, it's not, it doesn't work in the same way. If, if there's a need for it and it becomes a regimen, I feel like that's different, different than having a dependency on a product to go to sleep over time, your body regulates itself. And so it's very possible for you to start off with a very small amount and not even need to take CBN anymore because your body's gotten to the point where it's regulating itself and you can have your own healthy sleep cycle. So, you know, it just, it's a more natural approach, you know, long-term and a little bit more healthier for the body. Good point. And so back to the pharmaceuticals, does CBN interact with any medications? There's a potential to, um, we typically suggest that any kind of cannabinoid space at least two to four hours before or after, um, any kind of pharmaceutical medication. And that is just to reduce the likelihood of drug interactions. So if you're taking CBN at night, maybe having your last pharmaceutical dose, maybe two to four hours before that is possible, um, just to, to reduce that interaction possibility, but it's good to consult your doctor or your pharmacist to just to make sure um, you can also Google that information and see if there's a potential interaction. And, and I like that always, you know, I'm a big fan of always consulting your medical professional when it comes to um, putting any type of cannabinoid or hemp product into your body, just to see mm-hmm. how it interacts with you too. So thank you for that. Um, what is CBN oil? CBN is <laughs> the minor cannabinoid in, in found in the cannabis plant. And it is a very specific kind of product because it's, it's minor. So it's not abundantly found. And it's very specific in how you achieve it. And so it, it takes a lot to actually get a, a good concentrated oil product. And so we go through the process of cold extraction, using alcohol extraction, making sure all of our products are clean, organically sourced and processed. So if every Merriam scent product regardless of the cannabinoids, um, are clean and quality and affordable. Um, so CBN oil, you can find it. There's a lot of other companies that make it, but ours is special because we put a lot of love and a lot of intention into our product and they're effective and they work, especially in really small amounts. Not a lot of people need to see um, a benefit by having to increase and increase and increase. They're very intentionally made and the formulations um, are very specific the results that you're wanting to see so um you know cbn is just you can find that in any kind of um, cannabis plant if you let it sit long enough or you expose it to air long enough so it's just essentially stale thc that we then distill into an an actual oil product from the plant um the the raw plant material itself so what form do you mention about and you know old stale cannabis and so what forms does cbd so let me ask it again. What forms does CBN come in besides sublingual or, yeah. or, or in flower so, form? Do, do people uh, ingest CBN in other ways besides with uh, tinctures? They do. I've seen like CBN patches. I've seen CBN dates. Um, I personally have a CBN date. Um, that's one of my preferred methods other than oils because it's so it crosses the blood brain barrier so quickly you start to fill those results a little bit more um, effectively in a shorter amount of time. Um, And I've seen like raw cannabis plant material that you can get from a dispensary or even a CBD um, dispensary that have like high CBN profiles, as well as terpenes that also cause sedating effects as well. Um, So there's a multitude of ways that you can ingest CBN, but I would say the most common way is through some type of edible form 
whether that be, you know, um, like a gummy or a tincture or something that you would ingest. Um, I typically suggest that people take cannabinoids with a good fatty food because they do bind to fat and it's a little bit more, it absorbs in the body and it's protected with the stomach acids and things like that. So typically like with an oil, you want to hold it under your tongue for 30 to 60 seconds, but you may not, you know, actually absorb all of that within that time frame. So following that up with a good fatty food or a snack does help to, to increase the effectiveness of the product once it's swallowed as well. You know, I'm a fan of MCT oil. A lot of people know as coconut oil. So talking about the, the, the fattiness of that. Um, mm -hmm. um, and all your products are made with an MCT oil in the ingredients, correct? Yes. MCT or olive oil. Yes. So Lacey, this question comes up all the time too, is it, how does CBN affect you? That's a really great question. I would say most people using CBN are using it for its sedative properties. And so that comes along with sleep. A lot of people also use it for anxiety and it really helps us to even a person out. So I would say that within the body, it's working on CB1 and CB2 receptors. And if there is a um, deficiency or there's a need for the body to have additional assistance, CBN goes into those receptors, it kicks it in and says, hey, I'm here to help. And so it really helps to fill in the gap where the body's not able to make its own natural cannabinoids and it helps to bring your body back into homeostasis, whether that's sleep, whether that's anxiety, pain, or inflammation, CBN works in a multitude of different ways. So it's mainly working in your body and with the complications of the ECS system and, and working with your body to bring it back into balance. You, you, you mentioned CB1 and CB2 receptors quite a bit, not only with when we're talking about CBN, but also with CBG. Um, yeah. can, you, can you share with our audience what the difference is between CB1 receptors and CB2 receptors? Yeah, so CB1 receptors are mainly found in your nervous system and in your brain, while CB2 receptors are located in the immune system and other areas of your body. So depending on where those receptors are located, those endocannabinoids, as well as your phytocannabinoids, which is cannabinoids that are not made in your body, because we all make our own natural cannabinoids. And not a lot of people know that. So when we have those deficiencies, having phytocannabinoids, or also known as exogenous cannabinoids, like minors, like CBD, um, works on those receptors to bring your body back into balance. So it really depends on what your body needs. And those receptors work with your body to go where it's needed and then bring your body back into balance. So in short, that's where they're located and that's how they work. Great. Thank you for that. So, so how do you choose a good CBN product? That's a really great question. First, making sure that it's quality, looking at batch reports, also known as certificates of analysis, to make sure that your product has the potency and the concentration that it claims to have as well as if it's been tested for microbials, bacteria, mold, mildew, pesticides, and making sure that it's a clean and reputable product. Um, any company will be glad to share that information with you and to verify that your product is safe, is clean, and has the concentration that it claims to have. Um, another great way to, to figure out what product that you need is starting with a low concentration and working your way up from there. You may not need a lot, so maybe starting with a five to 10 milligrams of CBN a night and working your way up if you need more will help to determine what type of product that you need to start with or continue using. So Lacey, what, what are the risks of CBN? Well, research hasn't quite caught up with the risk of using cannabinoids like CBN, but if you're taking too much of a product, you can have some lethargy, you might have some stomach upset. And it's usually if you're taking quite a bit of oil um, per serving, not necessarily the cannabinoids. Um, some people also report just nausea, upset stomach and diarrhea, is typically the main um, symptoms, if you will. But usually pharmaceutical medication interactions are the main risk. That's why we suggest to do the spacing. Um, but if you're starting off low and slow and, and increasing and pacing yourself over time, there's very little risk and there's no um, death or anything reported, you cannot overdose using cannabinoid products. Just some other little minor minor side effects, which your body will 
share with you, upset stomach, right. as you mentioned, et, et cetera. Um, yeah, and you can always remedy that. So if you notice that, maybe I need to take a little less and next time I don't have to experience yeah. that. So that's just your body letting you know, hey, I don't need that much. Let's go backwards. So. <laughs> and not only is that good for your body, but also good for your pocketbook. You know, like that's you right. Said, uh, <laughs> less is more. Less is more. Less is more. And this one comes up. And so with, with your whole line of Miriam's hemp, products at 0.3 THC. Can you travel with CBN? Um, we have a lot of people traveling with CBN, myself included. It is a cannabinoid product. It's not THC. Um, so you don't need a doctor's recommendation or a medical card to obtain these products. They can be shipped directly to your home and you can buy them at a store. You can travel with them. Um, some people put them on their carry-on bags. Um, so it's a product that you can take with you if you need to. Um, some people also use syringes and just kind of draw up what they need if they're traveling for a couple of days and they already know, hey, I just need this amount. And they just draw up what they need for the, the duration of their trip and take it from there. Um, we do provide syringes and adapters with our products on our website if you want to purchase those for more accurate dosing or just to um, draw up and, and take with you on the go. So it's very convenient. It, it is very convenient. And so that is generally for domestic travel. And so for our audience that may be uh, who lives overseas or will be traveling outside of the United States, um, please check with your laws, uh, not only with the airlines, but also the laws with the state or the country that you'll be attending uh, and visiting. Uh, because each state, just like here in, in America, United States, uh, all laws are different at the state level. Uh, and the same thing with different countries. Different countries have different different laws as well when it comes to not only cannabis, but also hemp products. So thank you, Lacey, for all your informative information uh, on, on uh, the different the two cannabinoids we, we've discussed today, uh, but your thank whole you. line of, of, of products as well. Um, and we're going to keep on uh, promoting and educating our audience with with the different cannabinoids that Miriam's hemp uh, ha has available for their for their clientele, and so thank you for being a leader in this industry when it comes to top products. But also thank you for taking some time to talk with me and also sharing your knowledge with our audience as well. And so thank you for Lacey, having me. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for being on. And so Lacey with Miriam's hemp, check them out. Again, this is John Malanco with United Patients Group. Be informed and be well, and we'll see you soon. Have a great day, everyone. Bye bye. Bye.